How Mercury Causes Brain Neuron Degeneration Mercury has long been known to be a potent neurotoxic substance, whether it is inhaled or consumed in the diet as a food contaminant. Over the past 15 years, medical research laboratories have established that dental amalgam tooth fillings are a major contributor to mercury body burden. In 1997, a team of research scientists demonstrated that mercury vapor inhalation by animals produced a molecular lesion in brain protein metabolism which was similar to a lesion seen in 80 percent of Alzheimer diseased brains. Recently completed experiments by scientists at the University of Calgary's Faculty of Medicine now reveal, with direct visual evidence from brain neuron tissue cultures, how mercury ions actually alter the cell membrane structure of developing neurons. To better understand mercury's effect on the brain, let us first illustrate what brain neurons look like and how they grow. In this animation, we see three brain neurons growing in a tissue culture, each with a central cell body and numerous neurite processes. At the end of each neurite is a growth cone where structural proteins are assembled to form the cell membrane. Two principal proteins involved in growth cone function are actin, which is responsible for the pulsating motion seen here, and tubulin, a major structural component of the neurite membrane. During normal cell growth, Tubulin molecules link together end to end to form microtubules which surround neurofibrils, another structural protein component of the neuronal axon. Shown here is the neurite of a live neuron isolated from snail brain tissue, displaying linear growth due to growth cone activity. It is important to note that growth cones in all animal species, ranging from snails to humans, have identical structural and behavioral characteristics and use proteins of virtually identical composition. In this experiment, neurons also isolated from snail brain tissue were grown in culture for several days, after which very low concentrations of mercury were added to the culture medium for 20 minutes. Over the next 30 minutes, the neurite membrane underwent rapid degeneration, leaving behind the denuded neurofibrils seen here. In contrast, other heavy metals added at this same concentration, such as aluminum, lead, cadmium, and manganese, did not produce this effect. To understand how mercury causes this degeneration, let us return to our illustration. As mentioned before, tubulin proteins link together during normal cell growth to form the microtubules which support the neurite structure. When mercury ions are introduced into the culture medium, they infiltrate the cell and bind themselves to newly synthesized tubulin molecules. More specifically, the mercury ions attach themselves to the binding site reserved for guanosine triphosphate, or GTP, on the beta subunit of the affected tubulin molecules. Since bound GTP normally provides the energy which allows tubulin molecules to attach to one another, mercury ions bound to these sites prevent tubulin proteins from linking together. Consequently, the neurite's microtubules begin to disassemble into free tubulin molecules, leaving the neurite stripped of its supporting structure. Ultimately, both the developing neurite and its growth cone collapse, and some denuded neurofibrils form aggregates or tangles, as depicted here. Shown here is a neurite growth cone stained specifically for tubulin and actin, before and after mercury exposure. Note that the mercury has caused disintegration of tubulin microtubule structure. These new findings reveal important visual evidence as to how mercury causes neurodegeneration. More importantly, this study provides the first direct evidence that low-level mercury exposure is indeed a precipitating factor that can initiate this neurodegenerative process within the brain.
fillings leak substantial amounts of mercury constantly. The amount increases with any kind of stimulation, and as a result, mercury from fillings produces the majority of human exposure to mercury. The International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology is extremely concerned about the anecdotal claims of safety by manufacturers and dental trade associations. that are at variance with the published, peer-reviewed scientific evidence to the contrary. The precautionary principle requires action once the possibility of harm exists. It does not require proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that in the case of heavy metal and xenobiotic exposure is both nearly impossible and unnecessary in our opinion. What you're seeing is mercury vapor coming off a 25-year-old silver amalgam filling in an extracted tooth. The background is a phosphorescent screen. The mercury vapor absorbs the fluorescent light and you can see it as a shadow on the screen. This is mercury coming off a filling that was dipped in water that's the same temperature as the human body. This is a filling that was rubbed with a pencil eraser for just a few seconds. Like going to the hygienist and having her clean your teeth. These are not small amounts of mercury. If you can see it, it's more than 1,000 times higher than the Environmental Protection Agency will allow for the air that we breathe. What about the last time you went to the dentist and they drilled on your tooth? Here is the mercury vapor every time you raise the temperature to 110 degrees with hot coffee or warm water or even chewed on it. Mercury comes off fillings every time you stimulate them and that simulation causes the mercury to continue to leak out of the fillings for an hour and a half at a minimum. Some people grind their teeth. Some people chew gum. The dentist might send an old gold crown to the dental lab to be welded. How about the dental personnel? They're not being given informed consent. Back in 1985, the International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology set out to determine the amount of mercury that was coming off fillings. And here's the graph showing substantial quantities of mercury were measured coming off fillings. And then we estimated the total dose. And then we began animal experiments and put radioactive fillings in sheep. Mercury accumulated in the jaw, stomach, liver, and kidney of the sheep in just 30 days. Substantial quantities of mercury spread from the fillings to every organ in that sheep's body. This should be of concern one for everyone. Then we measured that the sheep's kidneys dropped in their ability by 60% to clear inulin, an indication of kidney malfunction. Whole body imaging of monkeys found exactly the same thing. Proponents of amalgam fillings claim that sheep chew too much. Well, what's the problem with monkeys? They had mercury in their jaw, kidneys, liver, intestine, and heart. And further research found dystrophic bacteria that were antibiotic resistant cropped up in the intestines within two weeks of receiving these mercury leaking fillings. Further studies have found damage to the ADP ribosylation of brain neuron proteins. In response to the controversy and at the request of the Federation of Experimental Scientists and Biologists, Drs. Fritzlaw Scheider and Murray Vimy wrote an editorial, the first ever in FASIB that point by point refuted the claims of the amalgam proponents. In 1991, the World Health Organization acknowledged that the predominant source of human exposure to mercury is from your fillings. That should be of concern to anyone wanting to have healthy children, because mercury is highly damaging to fetuses. Experiments in sheep showed that mercury from the sheep's fillings transferred immediately to the placenta, to the unborn fetus, and to every conceivable portion of the fetus's body. It even increased in the lamb higher after birth from mercury in the mother's milk. There's no such thing as a safe mercury filling. All mercury fillings leak mercury. The combined effect of mercury, cadmium, and lead is just now being investigated, but it's not one in one. 
It's synergistic, and one and one may make 100 or even 1,000. Why is that of concern? Over and over again, we've heard that children are exposed to lead from our environment. Mercury and lead is many times more toxic than just mercury alone. These black, corroded, pitted mercury fillings are used where you must drill away a third of the tooth in order to fix a pinhead-sized cavity. Even if you love mercury, it's the wrong thing to do to the children. It leads to broken, diseased, root canal, extracted teeth throughout the rest of the life. It's a blunder that costs the child all through their life. Millions and millions of dollars are spent annually fixing teeth again and again. And dentists don't follow the manufacturer's recommendations. They pack mercury in children around gold crowns, underneath bridges. They stuff it around the gum line in contact with tissues. There's mercury spreading from this gold crown to every tissue in that patient's body. Even if you like mercury fillings, putting that kind of filling in the tooth is simply the wrong thing to do. Harold Lowe, the former director of the National Institute of Dental Research back in 1993, wrote, The first filling is a critical step in the life of the tooth. Using amalgam for the first filling requires removing a lot of tooth substance, not only diseased tooth substance, but healthy tooth substance as well. So in making the undercuts, you sacrifice a lot, and this results in a weakened tooth. The next thing you know, the tooth breaks off, and you need a crown. Then you need to repair the crown. And so it continues to the stage where there's no more to repair, and you pull the tooth. With the first filling, you should do something that can either restore the tooth or retain more healthy tooth substance. Use new materials, composites, or materials that can bond to the surface without undercuts. You can do this with little removal of the tooth substance so that the core of the tooth is still there. I would add that the cost of all that dental repair over and over again makes the cost of mercury fillings enormous. Even if you don't consider the neurological impairment and the brain damage that they surely cause in dental personnel and the infertility and the heartbreak that they've caused to so many families. It is the opinion of this Academy that responsible government agencies should prohibit the use of these fillings until such time as their manufacturers produce the alleged evidence of safety. Show me the science. Research has shown that mercury fillings can be highly toxic to the body and can lead to a suppressed immune system by targeting the nerve cells. Mercury fillings have also been linked to chronic fatigue syndrome, Alzheimer's disease, autism, and asthma. It's crucial that the fillings be removed correctly with proper precaution so the mercury doesn't leak into your system and cause serious health problems. Dr. Ellis is concerned about the patient's safety first, so she is more conservative in her approach than more extreme holistic dentists. At Dentist Spa, Dr. Ellis works with her team to isolate the tooth with a rubber dam, high suction, and oxygen. In this way, both the patient and the staff are completely safe. First of all, Dr. Ellis always uses mercury-free fillings, which are made of white composite and porcelain materials, or gold inlays to fill cavities instead of mercury or amalgam fillings, as they're known in the community. Take a good look at me. I am amalgam-free. No longer does my body as can be I'm so glad to be mercury free I went to see the doctor 
Edwards, his dental chair has a view of the lake. His specialty is correcting all those mercury mistakes. He has the right stuff to fill your teeth so your body can be well. And when you're done, you can sing this song and ring that freedom bell. Oh, take a good look at me. I am amalgam free. No longer does my body have to deal with mercury. Take a good look at me. I'm as happy as can be. I'm so glad to be mercury free. Ring the bell. This video was originally produced to educate parents of autistic children, but as you'll see throughout the video, mercury exposure can affect anyone. In this generation, we're seeing an increasing amount of transmethylation sulfation impairment, some of which can include an inability to properly detox the body, kill viruses, or modulate the immune system. It can come from both sides of the family. But the environmental element of toxicity during pregnancy can only come from the mother. Since the mother's brain is protected by estrogen, symptomatic signs of mercury toxicity can be masked until later years of life. This is a clip from a video published by University of Calgary called How Mercury Causes Brain Neuron Degeneration. Shown here is the neurite of a live neuron. Very low concentrations of mercury were added to the culture medium for 20 minutes. Over the next 30 minutes, the neurite membrane underwent rapid degeneration, leaving behind the denuded neurofibrils seen here. In contrast, other heavy metals added at this same concentration, such as aluminum, lead, cadmium, and manganese, did not produce this effect. There are several hypotheses about the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, MTHFR, polymorphism as a cause of cancer and we see MTHFR polymorphism very commonly in autism in both the child and the parents. With a possible transmethylation problem that we see so often in this generation, I think the first step in becoming more healthy and to easily reduce a major risk factor is to remove any amalgam fillings. This study published in Carey's research in 2001 compared mercury levels in saliva from people with amalgams and people without. The results said we found the amalgam group to have significantly higher amounts of both organic and inorganic mercury. Our results are compatible with the hypothesis that dental amalgam fillings, in addition to being a major source of inorganic mercury, are also a continuous source of organic mercury. The citation was a rebuttal to the president of the American Dental Association by Dr. Board Haley, who's the professor and chairman of the Department of Chemistry, University of Kentucky. It said that elementary mercury from dental amalgam could work synergistically with other ethyl mercury sources and have a cumulative toxic effect on the body. This study published by Amy Holmes, Mark Blaxel, and Boyd Haley shows the average mother of an autistic child has approximately two more amalgam fillings than the mother of a typical developing child. This citation published in Massachusetts High Tech spoke about mercury removal from water. It said according to the Association of Metropolitan Sewer Agencies, 80% of mercury in wastewater comes from amalgam fillings. Just one filling can push 250,000 gallons of water above the acceptable mercury limits. Let's see what it takes to remove dental amalgam fillings. And here are some comments from Dr. Homa Adler as she removes amalgam from a mother of a child with autism. The first thing to note is to use a dental dam when you're removing your amalgam. I became distracted when I noticed the mercury warning sign on the wall. It's a California Proposition 65 warning, and it says that dental amalgam used in many dental fillings causes exposure to mercury, a chemical known to the state of California to cause birth defects and other reproductive harm. It also goes on to say that root canal treatments and restoration, including fillings, crowns, and bridges, use chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer. 
Then it says the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has studied the situation and approved for use all dental restorative materials, which basically says California has found these materials to cause birth defects and cancer. But the FDA said, eh, it's approved. Well, they, when they when they started detoxing her for mercury, she recovered. How do you detox someone from mercury? I found it interesting that the American Dental Association would teach dentists how to put mercury inside teeth, but never even explain that you can remove mercury toxicity from the body. This plastic dental dam ripped, so next time I know to ask for a rubber dental dam. What do you see? First, look into my mirror. I see it. Do you see that black stuff? Yeah, it looks like, actually it looks like the, the filling is still in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it not, no, there's no filling in there. So that brown stuff is what? Just Just discoloration of mercury. Let me clean it up better. So you basically, that's when the mercury has seeped inside the tooth. The tooth should be white. It's not going to go away. So how do you get the mercury off the tooth after? Nothing. I, there's no way for me to get it off. It's there. Unless you take the tooth out. Look at that. Right. You want to go in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get it from my mirror? I see it. I see it from the mirror perfectly. So all that brown is mercury. The only thing left was the seepage from the amalgam filling going into the tooth. And who knows where else. So do you think mercury uh, in filling should be illegal? Of course it should be illegal. I mean, this is what we see every single day when we take the uh, uh, mercury and the silver fillings out. I mean, you can see it. it it's, don't take my word for it. Just look at it. Why don't you think they make it illegal? Why? Because if they do, you know, all, everyone should be called in, all probably medical, all those free programs. Um, and it's like a recall. You think they have money to do this? I don't know. She thought that making amalgams illegal would bankrupt Medi-Cal. Either way, isn't it time to get these out of your mouth? We were just about to publish this video, and then we received more disturbing news. When they did the MRI, they said, yes, there is a pressured nerve, but you have a tumor in your kidney, in right kidney. And you know, I have never been sick, never ever had a problem, never had a cold. Eat healthy, I'm not obese, I'm not fat, and there's no history in my uh, family. I was just shocked. They took my kidney out and they took my um, the nerve. I had a back surgery also. In a month, I came back to my oncologist. They found I have breast cancer. Did a mammogram, biopsy, a surgery, lumpectomy, it was in my lymph nodes. I was ready to kill myself because of chemo. There's a dentist upstairs. <laughs> he heard about me. He said, you know, I have this, I had the same thing about four years ago. I bet you this, this has to do with mercury. What would you tell somebody with silver fillings or people that are thinking about Take it out and I tell everyone, don't become a dentist. There are still be companies that want to push mercury and you can't stay away from it. But I have heard that in Europe, you know, they are going to ban it and mercury is not going to be around anymore. I just don't know what's hap why it's not happening in the United States. I wouldn't recommend anyone to become a dentist or anyone to have a silver fill.